So we checked and found that we didn't see the cable on front, so we're going to have to open it with our spreaders. Now, in most vehicle extrications, the car's been impacted, it will have some naturally occurring opening points for you to get to. What we're going to do is make our own. Again, apparatus placement is key to any type of extrication. You want to make sure you've got your spreader at the proper angle to accomplish what you want to accomplish. If you take a look right in here, you'll see that there's a little bit of a plastic lip between the actual hood itself and where my spreader is going to make contact. So what we want to do is open our spreader up enough so we can bypass that plastic. Remember the tools slide on plastic, but they'll grip on steel. So we want to make sure we've got a good visual point where we can make sure our spreader tips make contact with the steel and continue on to that operation. Now you never want to have your spreader directly in line with the latching mechanism. And the reason for that is if I can get it to bow up and it doesn't release, I've got a nice big opening workspace for my cutter to come in and cut it at the same time. Now if you're doing this correctly, we got a nice big bite, but you can see how the outer skin peeled away from the actual inner skin of the hood itself. Sometimes you'll find this exact same thing on door skins. When you see the start to peel, stop because you're losing the effectiveness of what you're doing. We want to make sure that we're gripping both the inner steel and the outer steel to take it all with us at once. Now we can see that our latching mechanism is already exposed. It could be that I just continue on and it'll pop right open or I may decide to reposition my spreader to get a better bite. If I continue on in the position that it's in right now, the only thing that will happen is I will continue to peel the outer skin away, but I won't have any type of effectiveness to get more of the hood open. So now we're gonna reposition to see if I can get a better bite on the inner skin itself to see if I can release the entire hood. Once I've got my hood open, I'm gonna try to determine which location my battery is in. Used to be that batteries were in one of the four corners of the engine compartment itself. It's not always that case anymore. So if I open my engine compartment and I don't find my battery, I'm going to make sure I tell command that the battery is remotely located. I'm going to let all those inside know that I have not found the battery yet. And then I'm going to work my way to the trunk and at least start there to look. Now, most cars on the road today will have at least two negative cables. You want to cut the negative cable first. Don't just make one cut, make a couple cuts so we can leave a complete chunk out of it. Remember that battery cables have memory. So if you just make one cut, there's a good chance, and you can hear, see here that we have two negatives coming off of it. Okay. If you make one cut, there's a good chance that as you're jostling the vehicle, it may make contact again. If you can cut everything, don't be afraid to cut everything. Cut it all at one time if possible, or make a couple of smaller cuts. If you can cut the positive, cut the positive also. Now the big thing to remember is that battery cable cutters may not be the cutter of choice for the car that you find in front of you. Some cables are steel braided and some of the heavier cables you may actually have to get back to the rig, grab the larger bolt cutters. Don't be afraid to switch direction. If this isn't doing it, go back and get the right tool. Once the battery has been disabled, we're going to try to close the hood. Now we don't just want to let it drop back down into the latching mechanisms because we would probably have to come back and unlatch it again. So we want to put something substantial to block the hood from locking again. Now that can be a simple wood wedge, a 4x4, or maybe even a halligan bar. Place a halligan bar in a position where the hood will close but not lock again, and then you can allow it to come straight down. This way, if we ever have to get to it again to do a dash roll to remove the hood or whatever else, it's already completely unlocked for us and we don't have to worry about separating that locking mechanism again.